And to the ongoing clamor for police reforms is the country director for Open Society Initiative for West Africa, Mr. Jude Elo, who joins us from our studio in Abuja. Mr. Elo, thank you for joining us on the News at 10 tonight. Thank you for having me. We've counted eight days now uh, from the first day of the protests. What's your assessment so far? Uh, thanks. I, I must confess that I think this is our proudest moment as a country. I think what is happening is unprecedented. I think it's something that we need to be excited and happy about. Uh, because everything that is good about this country is being exhibited by these young men and women who, are, who have been on the streets for eight days. We are seeing the kind of unity that this country has been yearning for. There is no South, there is no West, there is no North in that protest. We are seeing people coming, binding together to help each other out. We are seeing people donating food. We are seeing people donating money. We are seeing the youth of Nigeria finding their voice in a way that actually awakens, in my view, the conscience of this nation, that calls us as a country to live up to the dictates of our constitution, that calls us as a people to come together and seize this historic opportunity to make the best of our country and reform our police. So I will say that I'm really very excited. I'm honored to be living in this country at this moment, to be seeing what is happening. I'm excited by their maturity, by the nonviolence nature uh, uh, of their protests. I'm, I'm excited by their restraints in, in the face of provocation by the police and by some of the thugs that have been hired to disrupt the process. And I think every Nigerian should actually be excited by what is happening. This is the kind of the country we are looking for, a country where people have a voice, a country where the youths are setting the example. It's clear that everyone wants uh, reform, says need to reform the police. That seems to be the general feeling, but the problem is how to go about that. So what's the best way forward? What would you suggest on how to reform the police force? I, I think there are a couple of issues here. I mean, you have the immediate issue, which is to respect the right of protests of Nigerians who are in the, in the streets. Uh, the second layer for me is to look at what is already existing, and one of which is the white paper uh, that was developed uh, after the prior investigation into the activities of SARS in this country. And, of course, the very measured and productive uh, demands of the young people, which is one, we need to have accountability. A lot of people have been killed by SARS. Uh, the names are many. We, he we heard the story of, of the young woman here in Abuja, a former, who because his, uh, her fiancé was not around, was picked up, eventually sexually assaulted and she died. We have the story of the student who's, who because of her hairstyle, of his, of his hairstyle, was eventually killed by the police. There has to be accountability for all of these deaths. There has to be accountability for a number of missing people who were picked up by SARS. There has to be accountability on what the officers have done. So what is actually upsetting a lot of people is that these things have happened and the people who perpetrated this heinous crime are walking free. And without accountability, there can be no justice. So the, the second layer of what the young people are asking for, what I think every Nigerian is asking for, is that there's accountability for the actions that has, been, that has taken place by the police. There should be accountability for people who have broken heads, killed people in this protest too. The third layer is to begin to look at the instrumentality uh, of, of, of policing in Nigeria. How do you then, after you've, you've this, uh, dissolved SARS, how do you begin to build something different, a different kind of structure that is built on the principles of human rights, that is built on the principle of people-focused and people-responsive policing, that is not built on extortion. The Nigerian police cannot be a criminal enterprise where police officers with guns are supposed to be making returns. It's not supposed to be a police that is reliant on checkpoints to fund the activities of the police. So we want to see a process that begins to reposition to the police to be for the people, to be, uh, to be focused on protecting rights and preventing crime, but also a police 
that is taking care of the police officers. We want to see our police officers properly taken care of, their salary pr promptly paid. We want to be sure that they have medical and health insurance. We want to be sure that they have insurance policies that when they die, their families are not thrown out of, out of, the, out of the barracks. This is the kind of police we, we, we want. And there are a lot of uh, reports, a lot of inquiries that are all over the place, which we can rely on. But at least the protests in the field have given us you know, very key demands of ensuring, for instance, that the SARS uh, officers, before they are reabsorbed into the police force, go through a bit of a psychological evaluation to be sure that they are fit and proper to carry arms. So these are some of the things Nigerians are asking for. This is why people are still on the streets. This is why people will continue to make this demand until there's a semblance of accountability and a semblance of clear benchmark, clear roadmap of where the police is going to go from this point to the next point. And so I think that, uh, I mean, I watched some of the interviews uh, uh, in the news where people are calling those protesting criminals. I think that is, that is really very offensive. I think that is unfair. I think it's dishonest and quite unpatriotic for people to call the Nigerian youths who are out there saying that we want a better police who are making demands for better remuneration for police officers, right. who are making demands for accountability, who are making demands to ensure that our children, that they themselves who are on the street can walk the streets of this country without having a heart attack because they are seeing a police post. Mr. And Edo. people are coming on national TV to say that they are criminals. I think that is unfair and unfortunate. And so the ingredients of this reform are, all, are already there. Um, I, I must also say that the fact that the Nigerian police came out to say, you know what, we've heard you and we want to do this thing, I think is a step in the right direction. But we are used to promises. Indeed, and we need to indeed. understand the level, of, the level of distrust in, in the country already. So yeah, and, the, and, we, and, we, and we everyone, can't just everyone seems with what to the know police that. is saying. Okay. Sorry, sorry to cut in here, but everyone, everyone seems to know that the, the police really needs to be accountable to the people and, of course, to the force switches uh, and, of course, to also protect protecting uh, um, civilians. But then you mentioned um, the protests and uh, the protesters being referred to as criminals and hoodlums, but there are some beliefs in some quarters that the protests have been hijacked you know, by criminals and hoodlums. Do you have that feeling as well? I think it's totally false and actually quite uh, dishonest for any Nigerian to come out and say that this protest has been hijacked. The fact on ground totally says something different. How can a protest be hijacked when these young men and women are even cleaning our streets after their protests? How can a protest be hijacked when they are the ones raising money to hire toilets for the protesters, to buy food for each other? How can it be protested? Be, be hijacked when they are the ones taking people who have been injured to the hospital to be taken care of. I, I think what we're seeing in the streets of Nigeria now is an example of what Nigeria should be, where we watch out for each other, where we are measured in our words, where we are respectful in our demands, where as a country we are binding together and making sure the weakest of us is able to be lifted up. Because if you watch what's going on there, when people are exhausted or can't go on, people carry them. In Abuja today, the hoodlums went and started beating up, uh, hitting at cars, destroying cars and all of that. And people are coming together to raise money to fix those cars. And it can't, people can't say that this has been hijacked. The message is still the same. Stop killing us. Reform the police. Treat our police officers better. In what way can anybody conceive that these bold and strong and courageous, beautiful Nigerians in the field who are making us realize what we have missed as a country, that they are hijacked, they are not speaking their voices. It is unfortunate for anybody to say that. And I, 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 I challenge any Nigerian to bring evidence to this table to say that the people in the streets are not speaking their voices. Jude Elo, Country Director for Open Society Initiative for West Africa. Thanks again for joining us on the News at 10.